So now we are being recorded. Now I'm going to make Liam a host. All right, this is uh, <clears throat> my first uh, pipeline author and SIG meeting in a little while. Welcome, everyone. Uh, I'm Liam Newman. The other people on the line are uh, Oleg, <clears throat> I think, uh, I think Kevin, yeah. and uh, say again? I think. I don't. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No problem. Yeah, I'm not sure we are still being recorded because uh, do you see uh, the yes, I, in the key? I have a pause record and a stop recording option here. So oh, I think we okay. are. Yeah. Um, and Vlad Silverman, um, <clears throat> if you don't want to be recorded, you can leave the meeting now and that's okay. Uh, as usual, uh, the Jenkins uh, code of conduct applies during this meeting and uh, welcome everyone. We'll be talking about uh, Pipeline Miss YAML, the meetup that we'll have uh, next week. And uh, it doesn't actually say on there, but I also know just to sort of put this on the list of things that I'd like to have us continue to sort of make progress on is the having an IDE in the VS Code for Pipeline. So uh, let's get started. Oleg, um, or actually, I think, uh, let's see, do you want to talk about the meeting you're going to have, or is that really just the, the sum total? <laughs> I mean, yeah. just, uh, I can share my ideas about the meeting on the 20th of July. So I'm planning to prepare some two or three pages of slides uh, about like the, some basic information about the pipeline, how it is working, with what features are implemented, and what are the next features uh, for the next implementation. Then I'm planning to uh, switch to hands-on uh, examples, tutorials, with a, an, and with an example a repository. So it will be just like an, uh, a tutorial, something like that. And also after that, it will be nice to have some questions or feedbacks, of course. Uh, I think that's all from my side. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, there's the link to this is, I believe, in the notes. Yes, so I just Excellent. And, uh, if, and I will make sure to uh, share this out on Twitter once again on my Twitter and maybe I'll do it on the Jenkins Twitter as well to make sure people are aware of it. Yeah, um, on uh, Twitter, but you announce it again kind of things, yeah. Yes, well, you got a good number of this. attendees though, that's good. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, so we can uh, get a bit more for sure. Uh, but definitely, we will have some audience there. Good. Um, yeah. Thanks, Toy Tuncha, for presenting because yeah, pipeline is YAML is an interesting topic. Yeah, it, it, high, yeah high interest. users. So um, let's see here. The the thing I'm I would ask I, maybe I think if you want to send uh, post the the slides maybe for some early feedback um, and sure. I just, can do it tomorrow. Is it okay? Oh yeah, totally. I just mean that way we can. Um, and <clears throat> I guess my question is: is are you are you pretty comfortable doing doing the uh, the, the the presentation just straight up, uh, or do you want to do a practice run of it? Um, seems like no. you're talking, so it's not a big deal. But I just yeah, I I feel comfortable. I mean, I did some presentations before, so okay. Yeah, I think yeah. But of course, like uh, checking the presentations from another perspective will be great because okay. maybe I I I mislead something or mis no, no, I, some typos. No, no, I, that that isn't what I'm worried about. I usually what I think about when I, when doing the presentation is just whether or not someone yeah, feels like they're comfortable and they've got you know everything that they need. So, but it sounds like you're you're, you're on top of it. So that's great. Yeah, I'm I'm cool with it. No okay, great. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. Yeah. One thing to mention about the presentations that uh, Jenkins Online Meetup is contributor driven event, and we mostly focus uh, live demos, show and tell. Mm. So, yep, yeah. mm, uh, the most important part is uh, the demo side, not uh, the slides, etc. And uh, uh, there is already a lot of good demos uh, in the repository, so I think that it will be a great meetup. Okay. Uh, 
for that, I'm planning to create another separate repository with some with simple application, which is Maven Buildable. And also I'm mm -hmm. planning to write all the pipelines, which I'm going to demonstrate in the presentation. So everyone can just easily uh, clone the repository and check the definitions, the YAML files, or even the build the project itself. Awesome. That, that sounds great. And that'll work uh, great as a long-term sort of example you can point point uh, point people to. So, cool. Uh, all right. Well, sounds like we're ready for that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Tecton pipeline trigger plugin demo. Uh, yeah. Uh, so it's just a heads up for everyone. Um, uh, there is uh, ongoing discussions about uh, having support uh, for Tikton in uh, Jenkins. And uh, in Cloud NFC, we plan to have a first demo of the proof of concept. Uh, so if someone is interested, please uh, vote uh, for time slots. Uh, we haven't uh, fixed the date yet. Uh, it will be uh, sometime next week. And yeah, the idea is quite simple uh, to be able to run uh, Tikton pipelines in Jenkins. So, and um, probably it will be a Tikton pipeline step, uh, which can be invoked from the Jenkins pipeline. So it's not something uh, replacing pipeline per se. It's a uh, opportunity to just trigger execution on another platform, similarly to how many other uh, trigger plugins create. It might be interesting to see uh, members as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I guess uh, these are two main news. So pipeline is YAML yeah. on top, uh, Tipton uh, pipeline trigger plugin. Also, if you read uh, the SIG mailing list, uh, Mark announced that he will be stepping down as a SIG uh, leader. It's unfortunate, so, but um, yeah. sad to see him go, but that, <clears throat> but as I understand, he's doing well overall um, and uh, just uh, basically a choice that he had to make. So um, anyways. Yeah, so anyway, I think that we should keep uh, uh, basic running. And yeah, there is absolutely. A of, uh, achievements uh, from the yeah. past months and we, keep, we should keep pushing them and probably onboarding uh, more topics and more contributors. So yeah, anyway. <laughs> Thanks a lot uh, to Marky for all the contributions uh, over the past months to the SIG. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So let's see. What else? The other thing I wanted to sort of make sure, I don't know that he, I don't think he started the thread. I need to go back and look. Um, the mailing this, thread, mailing this thread on the IDE, I'm, I will take that on. It's something that's, um, near and dear to my heart um, in pipeline, then I will get that uh, started this week. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of an action item if you want, but that's, um, there's actually several, uh, several like uh, IDE plugins for uh, VS Code that claim to do pipeline right now. And it's sort of unclear. It's every time you look at one, it's like, is that a, is that just a, a wrapper around uh, the, the declarative uh, linter, or you know, what what's going on there? So there's a, there's several that going on there. And it may be a matter of looking at what what's available and seeing if there's one that we can contribute to or pull in, or one that's willing to uh, sort of contribute it into the Jenkins org as opposed to keeping their own. I don't know. Um, yeah, the there's the linter one that's thirty nine thousand. Yeah, Jenkins file support. That's the one I was thinking of, um, but. Anyways, it's one that we have to sort of go look at and review each of them to say, okay, what, what's doing what here? Right, or maybe we could even consider starting uh, an official plugin. So, uh, for example, similar to what we did uh, with configuration as code plugin. Mm -hmm. Obviously, with inviting uh, contributors and maybe seeking options to fork something. Uh, because uh, yeah, having multiple plugins is great, but having one plugin with stronger community is also a great opportunity for us. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, what's interesting about some of the some of these other plugins is that they're using the Jenkins logo, um, and I don't know if they came up in the uh, uh, meeting in terms of being, <clears throat> or is or is the logo sort of generally allowed to be used for open source stuff? Uh, so logos allowed not only to be used uh, for, but, uh, for open source stuff, but basically uh, for any stuff because mm. uh, all logos uh, provide this Creative Commons attribution share like 3.0. Right. So what it means, you can take any logo listed here, you can uh, use it as is or, or you can uh, modify it, but mm. you're required to uh, um, refer to the original source. Okay. Obviously, not everybody bothers to refer original source, but at the same time, in many places, it's uh, not easy. Yeah. Personally, I'm not too concerned about that. Mm. Um, okay. But, yeah. Mm. It's definitely uh, something which may be a problem. Uh, but, yeah, the only reason to be concerned if it violates other Jenkins rules. Uh, everyone is welcome to reuse these logos. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. I've always been a little bit vague on, on, on that, so thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I should probably install one of these plugins. All right. Uh, do we have anything else to talk about today? Yeah, maybe uh, one related topic uh, to the logos. Uh, so I uh, right, the roadmap. slightly uh, updated the roadmap. Okay. Um, yeah, so the reason that uh, on uh, Wednesday we had a governance meeting and this uh, this governance meeting we approved publication of the roadmap. So I just wanted to clean up all items to ensure that uh, they have documentation, etc. So we have pipeline development and IDE. So mm -hmm. this it's in the scope uh, uh, for whatever VS Code or maybe other plugins. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, right now there is no explicit description of what it would mean. So what I did there, I just redirected to the SIG page because basically it's what I was uh, of the best effort. Right, sure. But yeah, if uh, the outcome of the discussions is uh, having more details and uh, putting, let's say, some information on pipeline authoring SIG page, like uh, listing projects like we did for other SIGs, okay. um, it would be good. <clears throat> I will check this page also because uh, there's an issue which I plan to do in the next releases uh, to enable some IntelliJ plugins for lighting pipelines as YAML. Maybe also we can include it. I don't know. Just an idea. I think so. Yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, hey, having that linked, do you want to have that discussion now in terms of uh, adding these things as projects or Oleg? Oh, why not? I can just show you an example of what we do. So, uh, in other six, we started uh, doing sections which basically summarize main initiative as being driven by six. For example, here mm -hmm. in documentation, you can see that there is plugin sign. Plugin site integration with GitHub, uh, user guide, reward administration guides, such as on Kubernetes, etc. Okay. We just listed the, it there, and it acts as a kind of landing page, and we gradually uh, extend this information so that users and potential contributors uh, may find uh, more information, including guidelines how to contribute, and uh, uh, also they could understand the current state. So basically, uh, the purpose of roadmap is not. Uh, only to show it to users, but also to show it to contributors uh, so that we can uh, highlight that, hey, there is an opportunity to contribute. Okay. And yeah, in uh, Autoring Seek, we uh, could do something like that. So just sounds, uh, sounds uh, good. a few projects. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. So, yeah, but basically that's what we could do here. Communications being yeah, we don't have a project. We don't have a project section. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, right. uh, seek pages are not required to have them, but it right. looks to be a good practice. So, for yeah. example, we have the same for advocacy and outreach. Uh, to some extent, we have the same for cloud native seek, though it needs a massive update. 
Mm. But, yes, in principle, it, again, it helps uh, to at least uh, uh, expand what um, are the main projects for the C. Okay. Do we, I don't know that we want to like work through that right now, but I can take that as an action item for like, next time to fill it, to create that. Yes, sound good. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, we have a lot of time. Um, does anybody have any topics to discuss? Just. Uh, yeah. Maybe I can ask something. Or like, uh, yeah. after the meetup, uh, I'm just planning to wait like one or two weeks to gather some. Uh, feedbacks or the usage feedbacks about the pipeline is YAML plugin. And after that, uh, I think we can just uh, release it with version one, but also it is important to get the feedback from the community itself and also seek. So what is your opinion about that? So personally, I would prefer to test it a bit more. Um, yeah, but yeah, two weeks sounds uh, reasonable. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to spend some time in May and uh, June on testing pipeline as YAML. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. it didn't uh, go as planned because yeah. we had no. this major infrastructure outages and yeah. other interesting thing. Yeah, so I would have preferred to test the plugin. Uh, but yeah, yeah, no problem. Then maybe like mm -hmm. end of August or maybe mm -hmm. September. Okay, then thanks. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, for me, the main objective right now is not to release it per se, because it can uh, remain in an incubating stage basically indefinitely. Uh, it already started accumulating users, etc. Yeah. For, for me, the main objective would be to actually facilitate the uh, early adoption and feedback at the current stage. Yeah, sure. So, for example, uh, yeah, you talked about demo repositories, etc. We can do that. We can do blogs. We can keep uh, adding features. And uh, yeah, for me, one to zero release uh, it makes sense in principle. Um, but yeah, personally, I wouldn't hurry right now. Yeah, sure, of course. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah, and enjoy the freedom. I mean, like right now, before before you go one point you you're free to go whatever direction you need to go. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, that, I can switch to JSON, Python is JSON. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Some of the project's JSON, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's, started, that's what we really need. <laughs> yeah. I started testing it today. Uh, so basically, I tried to deploy it, my, it in my computational scope environment. I hit some issues. Uh, so I just submitted a few patches. Uh, but for me, the biggest problem was with dependencies and with uh, yeah, basically dependencies. So here I updated to uh, plugin build my articles and Jenkins core build of materials. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually it reduced uh, the footprint uh, significantly. And it also reduced list of actual dependencies from 50 to less than 15. Because it was including, let's say, pipeline aggregator plugin here. So basically, it was uh, firstly pulling a bunch of dependencies. And secondly, yeah, I hope that at some point we will have uh, the plugin uh, pipeline aggregator on its own. So yeah, it, it would be better to just cut this circle dependencies. And yeah, I cleaned up a few other bits, but generally, it's uh, the main pull request. And uh, after that, it looks quite good. Right on. Thanks. Yeah, really appreciate because I'm not so much familiar with the this uh, dependencies, but I will use it as an example for my other pipelines, like plugins. So. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, for bill of materials, we still have a lot of limitations. So, for example, uh, pipeline model definition, uh, it's not in bill of materials. And uh, for your information, Lim, I just reported a defect there because it uses Go version higher than a version included in the Jenkins core. But did you see my comments, Oleg? I don't think it actually no. uses it. I think it's only an issue in plugins that depend on declarative and maybe only in certain cases. But I filed a PR. I don't, I don't know where you were testing it, but if you can test my PR, that'd be good. 
Yeah. So in my case, uh, the problem with my test environment that it's driven uh, by configuration as code, but it's also driven by Maven. And I deliberately enabled enforcer there. So for me, it's a pain to add plugin to my test environment these days. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it allows uh, to discover a lot of issues. And yeah, I haven't yeah. read the comment yes. as you may get. It has what? Uh, guava? Oh, geez. Okay. Well, but I don't. I don't know. I'm. Well, I'm confused about this for a number of reasons. But I guess the big thing is that this hasn't changed for like years, and I haven't seen this personally in other plugins that depend on declarative. So I'm wondering if there's something subtle going yeah. on. But. Uh, well, I don't think that there is something going on because in uh, this case you can see that the dependency tree is different. So it's not a plugin; it's a Jenkins file runner. Uh, it basically yeah. uh, declares dependency on Jenkins for explicitly, so dependency tree is different. And maybe it, uh, what tree does yeah, Maybe issue. that's a, yeah. Maybe having an explicit dependency on core makes a difference. Yeah. I don't know. Anyways, I filed a PR to mm -hmm. maybe suppress the issue, but um, I, I don't know. I didn't have a chance to test it. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm, but yeah, thanks for that. Uh, anyway, in my case, I just excluded Guava. It was the easy part. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, in uh, such case, you never know when it explodes. So for me, it's just uh, generally a good practice to clean it up. Yeah, I was um, just yeah. Uh, surprised that I didn't see it in declarative itself. And then I, when I was looking at it, I noticed a bunch of other weird dependencies that were kind of this similar, where it was like, should we start excluding a lot of things? But I don't know. Well, yeah. Anyway, we should also think about updating Google in Jenkins core because 11 uh, is something like 10 years old or so. Yeah, that, that I brought that up just a little while ago in another uh, uh, another discussion. And the, this, yeah, it's a great idea. I, I've also been informed that it, it would be an insane pain in the pain to do um, and likely well, break. Or likely breaking for many plugins. So maybe you have seen this pull request mm -hmm. uh, just uh, to just keep do. your motivation up. <laughs> SNG security. Ah, uh, uh, there you go. So if you can do that, we can definitely do Guava. Uh, but uh, yeah, the amount of effort is quite high for sure. Okay, so yeah, yeah. back to uh, pipeline auto rank. Um, actually, while why I'm uh, doing that, uh, I'll try to embed pipeline as YAML into Jenkins file runner. Actually, I already did it, and uh, the patch was quite simple uh, okay. because yeah, Jenkins file runner has full control of uh, what it does, and thanks to it, to ensure the API is almost the same. So basically, now it just checks whether it's YAML or not and takes uh, different uh, flow definitions. Uh, obviously, it's just a first step because uh, in the future, I'll probably need to implement better APIs. Uh, but Python is YAML uh, works there uh, for Hello World after that. So, um, and the push that for Jenkins file runner uh, would be interesting because yeah, in this ecosystem, there is a lot of YAML already. So, yeah, maybe it will help us to facilitate adoption. Totally. Mm -hmm. Cool. So it's currently just draft, though. Are you? I mean, what else do you need to do there? Well, um, just... uh, I asked you to ensure about uh, the release. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So for me, uh, there are still some uh, issues on uh, Jenkins file runner um, to be uh, tested before I release it. But hopefully, so. If pipeline is YAML is released today, I will be able to pull it, uh, sort of to release it uh, by the online meetup as well. So some testing mm -hmm. and possible updates. That's what I was wondering. Okay, yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. I will release it after the meeting. No. Okay, great. And yeah, for me, yeah, just uh, testing pipeline is YAML. I think it would be the main priority within uh, this story because Jinx file runner part is quite simple. Right. Uh, but the yeah, pipeline is YAML it is a bit more challenging because yeah, it uh, ha also has converter part. Um, and uh, yeah, this converter part uh, 
uh, is quite complex. I haven't even touched it yet. Okay. And uh, yeah, the execution part, uh, yeah, the syntax uh, looks good to me, but uh, getting feedback on syntax is probably also something we need. Yeah. Especially, I'm not sure what we would like to do with regards to Jenkins pipeline YAML uh, and uh, Jenkins X pipeline. I think that there are still opportunities for some uh, other uh, syntax we use, but yeah, it's probably for future stories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So, yeah, I guess that's it. Okay. Are you tuned? Do you have any uh, other ongoing work with pipeline as YAML? Uh, yes, these are the issues that I'm currently working on. Mm -hmm. So, but mostly I'm waiting for the meetup. So, especially the feedback is more important, especially for the usage part. And uh, also, uh, I'm planning this uh, another converter because I implemented one converter which is converting pipeline as YAML to declarative, but I'm planning to work on the vice versa. So converting declarative pipelines to YAML formats, but uh, maybe uh, I need to think about it because uh, I need to somehow pass all the model AST elements in the pipeline model definition to be able to make it uh, YAML mm -hmm. format. Uh, but also this uh, <coughs> pipeline model definition has a converter into JSON. So maybe this can be a question. Will it, be, will it be better to implement this uh, model AST to the YAML in the model definition or should I implement myself? Because there are some logics while converting this model AST elements to YAML. For example, converting functions or agent definitions. So there are some logics that I need to implement, but uh, so. So the, um, <clears throat> so the pipeline model definition plugin does the, the JSON conversion there. It also does, uh, it does JSON to Groovy and Groovy to JSON. So it's a full round yeah. trip thing. Um, yeah. I just checked the plugin, this plugin's code, and I saw that while it is uh, converting to JSON, it checks some uh, definitions, like for example, the agent definition, is it defined like with yeah. node name or is it just a label? So from the YAML part, I'm going to implement the same logic there because also it should be like a little bit uh, similar. So that's why I wasn't very sure about that. I was going to ask it after the meetup maybe. So how we should proceed. I can easily implement this conversion in my plugin. Just, I wasn't sure like if in the future, if some logic changes in the model definition pipeline, then I should also implement the same logic yeah. there. Yeah, you probably would end up needing to. I mean, right now anyways, having it in your own plugin makes sense because then you can just, you can work at it on your, on your own speed. What we've done on the pipeline model definition plugin side is um, we have a whole bunch of tests to guarantee full round trip behavior and all that other stuff uh, for mm -hmm. everything. So that would, that would involve being uh, like, I mean, that'd be a great, great place to test it, but that, that plugin is also already pretty test heavy. So the, the build on it is pretty long. Um, mm. I mean, I am okay with, uh, for implementing myself that's totally fine for me. Just I just wanted to get some opinions from you guys. Mm -hmm. So if you are all agree that, hey, okay, it is go to with the pipeline is YAML. And uh, in, the, in the future, if we change some logic in the pipeline model definition, we can just easily implement or change in the pipeline is YAML. Yeah, it's good to go for me. Yeah, I think keeping it in your own plugin will probably be easier for you. We just need to make yeah. sure to add um, some kind of test to the um, some test run to the pipeline model definition plugin that picks up when, once you, once you go one, certainly by when you go 1.0, but probably something sooner than that is to say, Hey, uh, 
when you should run a few tests from pipeline uh, from the pipeline as YAML when we're building pipeline model definition to make sure that we aren't breaking it. Yeah, sure, yeah. of course. It's one cool. of the options, and uh, currently in uh, Jenkins, uh, we have support for that. So there is plugin compatibility tested. Which right, exactly. That's what I mean. Um, on plugins, so you yeah. can uh, do forward compatibility test. Um, yeah. Uh, if I understand correctly, um, uh, this the question is only about the YAML part because yeah. Uh, yeah, if we can use uh, pipeline model with a definition to retrieve JSON, converting JSON to YAML is basically yeah. quite tricky. Yes, it also uh, exports lots of unnecessary attributes. Um, I mean, not unnecessary, but not related to YAML. Uh, so okay. that's why direct converting will make sense. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Uh, no, uh, I will check this compatibility plugin tester. So, PCT, yeah. Idea. Okay, I will have some idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else? A little early, but. Not from me. All right. Uh, so yeah, maybe one thing which uh, I will finally put on the roadmap. Um, so there was uh, an item for pipeline integration testing. Uh, we removed it from the roadmap because uh, there was no clear uh, scope for what would be there. Okay. It was uh, referring to uh, one issue. Um, I think that uh, once uh, Jenkins file runner is released, etc., I will probably revisit my experiments with uh, integration testing with Jenkins file runner. Okay. Uh, because yeah, what I already do, for example, um, in the code base, uh, we have uh, two frameworks there, and actually I was able to get the Jenkins file runner uh, running from JUnit. So for Java developers, etc., we can simplify that. And yeah, maybe it will help uh, with um, uh, pipeline library testing because right now for our own usage, uh, testing pipeline library is quite difficult. For example, right now we have a, a pull request for uh, testing warnings in G and it's extremely difficult uh, to test it only with uh, pipeline unit because pipeline unit doesn't test real behavior. Right. So I hope that uh, integration tests uh, will be on the agenda at some point. Okay. Sounds good. So you'll you'll uh, you'll add that to the roadmap and and be taking a taking a look at it at least. Maybe. Maybe. So okay. yeah, I can uh, show how it uh, works in Jenkins file runner if you're interested. But it's really simple. Okay. Uh, so if you want, I can just show it quickly. Sure. Well, actually, okay. I mostly switched to Visual Studio Code for development, even for Java, which sounds weird. Okay, so here yeah, in Jenkins file runner now we have vanilla package, which is basically powered by bill of materials, etc. It's just a package with all standard plugins, including uh, scripted pipeline, declarative pipeline, and a few other bits. And um, there is an opportunity to test it now. So there are some test utilities, etc. Uh, but yeah, after that, uh, testing pipeline in the uh, unit with Jenkins file runner looks something like that. So pretty much similar uh, to common unit tests. You just uh, declare dependencies on proper components and uh, uh, Jenkins file runner can start with dependencies, declare it in form XML and yeah, just start executing the stuff. So cool. basically, yeah, how it looks here in form XML, uh, yeah, uh, there are some components which will end up likely as a, a single model. You also declare dependencies on your plugins, which you can use. And you can see no versions because it's from BOM. And after that, you yeah, just uh, a few test utilities and you get Jenkins file runner uh, running. Uh, but yeah, the problem there is with plugin combinations. For a single plugin sets, uh, yeah, just a minimal G unit. You can use uh, test containers and other bits for emulating test environment. And yeah, 
use all these tools, you can uh, relatively quickly test pipelines. And you just get, I should have um, some real tests here embedded or not. Yeah, so there are some pipelines like that, basically. Also, hello world styles, but a bit bigger uh, than the usual. And yeah, they get executed. So okay. I will gradually move uh, some of tests and probably it can be called this integration testing framework later once everything is integrated. And yeah, it's still potentially a white box test and because you can uh, access Jenkins internals from the same test, uh, but yeah, it's rather for advanced users, not for common uh, pipeline developers. There'd be an option, it would, do you think, how hard it would, be, would it be to make it something that, that people could use more, more generally? I mean, from what you can see. Mm, sorry? How, how hard, how hard, like you're saying, it's for advanced users. What, mm -hmm. it, it seems like something that, that could be useful for, if not beginners, but like, like what, mm -hmm. what, could, what, what needs to be done, what would need to be done to bring this down to something that, that would be easier for people to use? Uh, so I want uh, to have uh, test rules. And I want uh, to just have a uh, parent POM or whatever, which integrates all the stuff. So that basically you just uh, define uh, your dependencies. Mm -hmm. If you want, you can also de uh, define your configurations as a JCASC. So That's, similar yeah. to how we do for in performance tests for Jenkins now. Okay. And uh, it's just a uh, test rule, et cetera. Uh, right. And it provisions, uh, well, basically a Jenkins file runner environment uh, and execute it. Okay. So, well, it's, well, we could probably do the same without uh, Jinx file runner at all. It's just an uh, engine which already embeds a lot of stuff. Right. And yeah, maybe, so it's quick implementation and maybe a more complicated implementation is to actually have something without Java. So we have a Jenkins file runner test framework, which is basically SH unit two, but uh, it's quite complicated now. So maybe having something in the middle on Java, but again, uh, quite simple to use, uh, integrated with existing test framework. Um, then yeah, you can also use it for integration testing. But yeah, uh, uh, personally, I would rather use the Java or other engine which is compatible with test containers because it's much more convenient to test these environments after that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, not sure when I get to that, but yeah, in principle, it's uh, quite easy to get it running. So it's a small matter of programming to just create documentation and uh, APIs uh, to make it useful. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I, I think that's that's good for today. Um, we're coming up on time, so let's uh, thank you all for joining us here, and um, we will uh, see hopefully everyone on Monday, and then uh, again next Friday. Mm -hmm. And I will go ahead and uh, stop the recording. Mm -hmm.